Hey everyone, thank you for checking out another video. This is going to be part two in the hexagon map tutorial series. I guess we can remove this for now. I do want to move away in this episode from Python processing and start moving towards p5.js. So that's JavaScript, which is that's where we're headed because we want to make something that other people can interact with. We want to be able to use these JavaScript library libraries that are going to allow us to change the code uh, at runtime. So it's very exciting. We, we worked out in the past, I guess I can run this, we, we worked out the hexagon grid in the last video. If you haven't seen the first one, then make sure to check that one out. We're not going to do a ton in this video, I just want to point out a couple of resources, show you how to get those resources set up so that we can start playing around with p5.js, and then maybe we'll port over some of the code just to make sure that we can draw a hexagon uh, in, in p5.js. Uh, so the first thing that I want to point out is that I am using something called brackets. So this is my brackets editor right here. It's pretty cool. I'm kind of new to it, but I like it so far. It's, it's free, it's open source, but it's a web editor. And one of the really cool things about it is that it allows you, or it comes with a, a web server that allows you to spin things up locally, uh, automatically for you. It's very simple. And I've got it set up where it will also use p5.js, so we just we we can work on our code in a code editor, and we can see those changes live as soon as we save the file. So it's really cool. So I'd recommend that you go download Brackets if you don't already have a tool that you like to use. In addition to Brackets, I would also recommend that you download p5.js. I don't know if you can use a CDN, which is kind of a an internet link to the JavaScript library. Uh, I think it's a lot simpler if you just come here, you go to download, and then I'm just using the the, the minimum required version, which is this p5.min.js. If you download that, we're going to add it to our project. And, then, uh, and when I say project, I literally just mean a folder with an index file and a JavaScript file. And then you just open that up in brackets or whatever, whatever text editor that you want. But you will need some version of p5.js in order to work on this project. So here's the Python version. Here's my brackets editor. I'll show you the code very briefly about how I have it kind of set up. I've got the script.js file, which is, it, right now it just has a couple empty functions. The index file is a, a, a div where I have this ID that says sketch div, and we'll use that in a second to kind of connect the p5.js file to this HTML file. I did add my p5.min.js to my resources folder. It's just a folder I have in here. I can make this a little bit bigger. And I reference that here. So if you know how HTML works, you just have to reference the JavaScript files that you're using. We are referencing the p5.js and we're also referencing our script where we'll be writing our code. In the script file, if we start thinking about how we connect to the HTML, and I'm gonna to try to go through this pretty quickly, the first thing we need is a canvas. So I'm gonna connect a canvas div object to the document. So we'll say document get element by ID. By ID. And remember we said that that was sketch div. So we're just connecting it to that. We're going to go ahead and define a width. You can base the width off of the, the div in the document, but for right now we're just going to define these ourselves. I equals 800. And then we're going to create it var cnv equals create canvas width height and then let's make sure we did that correctly oh we still need to add the canvas as a child of the sketch div oops sketch div. so to see if we did that correctly we call background uh, zero so we'll say uh, we'll just make the canvas have a background of black. So if I save this, I've actually already got it running here. So we've got it running successfully. If you're using brackets, all you have to do is hit this little lightning button in the corner, and that's going to start that live preview. It's going to spin up the little local server, and then it should open a Chrome tab, or I, I don't 100% know if it works in other browsers. Maybe it is only Chrome. I'm actually not totally sure about that. But hopefully you'll get to a view like this where you can see the canvas, and we're drawing there successfully. So if we start thinking about trying to bring over some code, the first thing we need is the draw hexagon. So let's bring that over. Also, I guess first we want to make this white. So if I save it, 
see this is how the live preview kind of helps us out. We save it and then we're automatically seeing the differences. But if this is going to be white, I'm going to come into my index file and I'm going to change the background of the document to something else. By something else, I guess for now, I'll just do black. So I save that and now we've got this. So actually let's make it two. That's a little bit better. Well, there's still this strange blue color. Oh, I think the blue color is something that Brackets is doing. But that's okay for now. Yeah, I think it was just because I clicked on it, maybe. I don't know why it's drawing a... I don't know why there's a line around it. Am I drawing a line? I don't know. I guess it's not super important right now. But, so we've, we've got the canvas, and I... Did I copy the code? So we've got the draw hexagon function. I'm, I'm literally just going to bring it over. We can actually delete this, copy that in. We have to change this from the Python. Take away that, take away this, and then that. I don't, I don't know for sure if this is going to work right out of the gate. I can't remember if the begin shape and adding vertices works exactly the same, but I think it does. Let's comment this out for now as well, and then we'll just call it. We'll say draw hexagon. We've got a width and height of 400, so which, or 800, so we'll just say 400, 400, and then we need a side length, so we'll say 50. Nothing shows up, but we're not, we'll say stroke zero, and then stroke weight three. Hmm. Oh, we're not filling anymore. What if we say fill 0, 255, 255. So nothing's happening. Okay, so I think I know the issue. I think the problem is that this is in a tuple for Python, but with p5.js, I think it just needs to be an x and y value. So we can take out all these parentheses, just an extra parenthesis on each side that kind of group this together as one little object, and then I think it will work. So yes, okay, so there's the hexagon. Well, cool, so we've already got the hexagon over in p5.js, and we're one step closer to having an interactive hexagon map in, uh, in the internet, so that's pretty cool. I'm not gonna do anything else in this video, actually, because I think that's a pretty good start. Hopefully, everything I said about brackets and p5.js makes sense. There are other resources online if you get a little confused, but the main thing to remember is that you just have to download this P5, either the P5.js file or P5.min.js, which I think is fine. Uh, it's a little bit smaller. Just have it in your uh, folder structure, and then you can reference it directly from your index file. So I'm going to leave it there for now. Uh, this has been part two, and I'll hopefully see you in part three. Hopefully this has been helpful and interesting. If it has been and you've learned something new, I'd love to hear from you guys. And I appreciate it very much that you're watching the videos and I hopefully I will see you in the next one.